Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Tens of thousands of climate activists marched in Washington, D.C. on February 17th. It was the largest rally of its kind. But did the corporate media hear them? A few outlets paid attention, like Democracy Now! and Up with Chris Hayes on MSNBC. But if you watched the nightly newscasts, you'd have thought nothing much at all happened. All of 43 words on ABC World News about the march, a whopping 63 on NBC Nightly News. CBS Evening News came in under 50 words, which was still enough to mislead its audience. Environmental activists marched in Washington today to protest plans for the Keystone XL oil pipeline. If it gets government approval, Keystone would carry oil from Canada to refineries in Texas. The pipeline would create 20,000 jobs, but opponents say the environmental risk is too great. Well, that 20,000 jobs figure comes from the company that wants to build the pipeline, and you hear it from some of its Republican supporters. Other estimates, including from the State Department, are a few thousand temporary construction jobs and perhaps even fewer than that. The D.C. protests were, as one CNN reporter put it, historic. When history looks back on how we responded to the climate change crisis, the fact that most of the corporate media missed its importance will be remembered. Left-wing Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa was poised to win re-election on February 17th. But the day before, the New York Times went with a peculiar headline about the election. Here you can see it as it appeared on the paper's Twitter feed. Someone at the New York Times must have thought that there was a problem with this, talking about the apprehension of voters who were about to overwhelmingly re-elect the guy. The headline was changed. It became something about what some people thought. But the problem with the story didn't change. In fact, that first headline was more fitting. The article started by talking to one anti-Korea Ecuadorian. That was followed by the Times explaining that the top of Korea's agenda was to attack the media. That was followed by a newspaper editor who said that Korea will try to flatten anyone who is in his way. That was the overall pattern in the article. Plenty telling readers what was wrong with Rafael Correa, but very little that would indicate why Ecuadorans support him. Readers finally learned that Correa has governed during a period of relative prosperity, which makes it sound as if he got lucky. It isn't until near the end of the article that we hear that on Correa's watch, poverty has been greatly reduced. There's more to this story, of course. As economist Mark Weisbrot put it, there's been serious financial reform, massive stimulus spending, and the breaking up of media and banking conglomerates. The results of the vote demonstrate that Ecuadorans weren't apprehensive about Correa at all. So why was the New York Times? Probably because his left-wing policies are the kind that institutions like the New York Times tell us aren't supposed to work. And finally, you might not be surprised to find out that a discussion of rape on the Fox News channel turned out to be horrible. The topic was concealed weapons, and viewers of the February 19th broadcast of the show The Five heard one panelist question whether rape on college campuses is even a problem. What was the last time right you heard about a rape on campus? What? what are you talking about? Oh, it's like you... rampant. It's rampant? Well, Rapes on campus? In particular, date rape on campus. Wow. Yes, well, date Bob, rape, it's yeah, a very big date problem. Rape. Are you going to take, take a gun out and shoot your date? I don't uh, know. Maybe you should. If your date is a rapist, you shoot them. <laughs> can, can we move on? Let's move on to this. Now, we know Fox News is Fox News, after all. But it's important to note who this was coming from. This was from Bob Beckel, one of Fox's token liberals. He issued an apology of sorts the next day, explaining that rape is horrendous and that he was attempting to say something. This episode goes right along with other outrageous and idiotic things Beckel has said over the years on Fox. He's referred to oriental eyes. He's talked about Chinamen and rednecks and on and on and on. He's apologized for some, but not nearly enough, of these remarks. This track record would probably lead any other employer to tell him to take his act elsewhere. But if you're running a right-wing propaganda network, perhaps it's valuable to keep a leftist like Bob Beckel around. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.